Hello, BookTube. As you know, I leave my email on every video. I encourage you all to email me at any time about anything, about any subject. I uh, urge you to keep your email relatively brief. If it's 5,000 words, I'm just my brain is just automatically going to slot it to do work. And if it's work, it's going to go in a, ro in a rotation of work, and it'll be a while, if ever, before I actually get to it, since it is unpaid work. <laughs> uh, I would, that would be number one. And number two would be, I would urge you to remember that I get a lot of emails, so it might take me time to respond. Uh, but every once in a while, I get an email that is instructive. It is, it is actually uh, forward-facing in a way. And I thought I, that I might institute a regular feature on this channel where I read an email like that and discuss just a bit. I got one just the other day, just recently, uh, that asks questions that I like. I thought, so I, I thought I would, I, I will keep the, the, the sender anonymous, but the questions might be of interest. Uh, this is, these are the questions in a barrage. Why isn't Moby Dick in the Dude Bro canon? Isn't Ahab the ultimate bro, a man of fortitude who overcomes extreme obstacles, follows his vision, and sticks to the mission regardless of cost? He's a one-man SEAL Team 6. <laughs> Plus, the book has a dick in its title. <laughs> Am I mistaken, or have you suggested that Mishima qualifies as dude bro lit? Why Mishima and not Melville? Is it because Mishima pumped iron at the gym and less manly Melville merely hiked outdoors? I thought this was this was very interesting for a number of different reasons. First of all, I don't think I have ever suggested that Mishima is a dude bro author. I would hope that I haven't, because he clearly isn't. And uh, when discussing why someone is or isn't a dude bro author, it might help to recall my seminal video on the subject. A few years ago, I did a video on the seven deadly sins of dude bro lit, and I enumerated those sins, the first of which is misogyny, number two is sexism, Number three is an in, uh, a, a fetishization of inventories, of the step-by-step the -step enumerated d descriptions of minor and trivial actions or things. Uh, number four is the way Dude Bro Lit invests trivia with cosmic significance uh, in an attempt to borrow profundity. Uh, number five is that, that these books tend to happen in video game-like flashes or structures and uh over the years a number of you have pointed out that that wouldn't that rule out an infinite jest which is a dude bro bible because it's certainly not happening in flashes it's a thousand more it's a thousand pages long no i would argue that it doesn't rule that out at all it is uh infinite jest may be long but it is very much hallucinogenic it is very much m meant to excite exactly the kind of, kind of the part of the brain that i'm talking about which leads to uh Dubrosin number six, which is that the purpose of the thing is not to present an artistic vision. The purpose of the thing is not to, to elevate or to challenge. The purpose of the thing is only to keep the player hooked into the game. You're just supposed to want more of it. That's all you're supposed to want, is more of it. You're not, it's not supposed to send you off to other things. You're supposed to just stay hooked into the game. Uh, and then the, and that leads to the seventh of the, the seven deadly sins of Dubro Lit, which is that it is addictive. It creates a habit. No different than any physical addiction, any chemical addiction. It creates a habit that a great number of young men I've known over the years who read Dubro Lit fall into that habit and never come out of it again. So they are, they are getting up in the morning and ignoring their kids and ignoring their wife in order to compulsively just necrotically refresh the Amazon page for the two authors that they currently read. Who are, they're, just, they're, just, they're the one old gray-haired rat in the, in the laboratory labyrinth that just, just can't give up. It just can't give up. And... It, that's because they, they have eroded, their addiction has eroded their ability to read anything else. So they can't actually go anywhere else for new thrills in reading. They just have to keep that up. Just keep doing that. Hey, I heard they found a manuscript. You heard anything about that? Got a new manuscript? New manuscript? Anybody? New manuscript? <laughs> uh, those are the seven deadly sins of Dude Bro Lit. And I know that on the surface, it looks like, for instance, Moby Dick, fulfills some of those, but it absolutely does not. The Moby Dick does not do anything as dumb, as tawdry, or as manipulative as presenting a worldview 
much less as Dubrolit always does. Another another sin that I could easily have added was that it's prescriptive. Dubrolit not only presents a, a way to look at the world for men, women don't exist in Dubrolit, but also whether it's fiction or nonfiction, Dubrolit more or less enumerates the steps you need to take, prescribes steps you need to take in order to adopt a worldview, the one and only right worldview. Uh, I'm not going to uh, go on a rant here. I'm not. I, I'm not going to delve into the significance of it's the birth rates. It's the birth rates. It's the birth rates. Okay. <laughs> There's plenty of very dark subtext to do, bro. Lit. I'm not going to get into any of that. But but I am going to point out that although uh, Moby Dick looks vulnerable on the surface in that very video, the the deadly sins of do, bro. Lit. I talk about how Moby Dick absolutely does not qualify. It does not do anything as dumb as prescribing a worldview and although it has no female characters one female character is alluded to and that is ahab's wife the mother of his child and she's alluded to in a very sympathetic way and the sympathy derives from the central reason why moby dick is not dubro lit which is the the, uh, the letter writer here is asking isn't isn't uh ahab the ultimate dude bro a one-man seal team six but ahab is despised by the characters in the book the more people know him the more characters know him the more they fear and pity him he is less than a man he's a lot less than human he's uh damaged beyond recall and damages everyone else around him beyond recall almost with only one survivor i alone uh that is a far cry from dude bro lit where the main character might encounter scorn from beta male cucks or from any you know one-dimensional female character that happens to wander into the book by accident but you the reader are the real audience here you are an extra character in the book and you are the real audience for the dubro self-insert uh shining golden statue at the heart of every dubro book is a is a male character who is not only that statue but is clearly meant to be your life goal there's nothing like that in Moby Dick at all. There's also nothing like that in Mishima. It's true that you, you could count on the fingers of one hand anything like a fully fleshed out female character in any of the novels of Yuki or Mishima. But the male characters are not held up as anything like that. The novel, the horrible jingoistic nationalistic novel that Mishima could have written, especially later in his life, he most certainly could have written a book like that. If he ever did, I'm unaware of it. He certainly must have felt those temptations, but I believe that right up until the end, he revered his art so much that he was not willing to twist it to what he recognized as his own temporary preoccupations. I don't think he was ever willing to do that, or he could have written a novel that would be, you know, who would have annihilated his literary reputation. I don't think he ever did that, but certainly he never does any of the other things that, that Dupro Lit does, neither Moby Dick or nor excuse me, nor any of Mishima's novels. I'm not talking about his plays here. I, I, maybe it's a I careful out on my part, but I'm going to leave his stage work out of this consideration. I believe it was a different part of him that he was channeling. I think it was a different creative process. I don't think it enters in here. We're just talking about novels. I don't believe you can make a case for the novels being any of the things that this poor misguided soul writes. Also, I'm, I'm not sure how often Mishima pumped iron at a gym. And uh, Melville was not less manly <laughs> at all. Uh, not not that these things should be contemplated, and, and the contemplating of them is an essential dude bro move. But if there were a, a, a fight between a 30-year-old Melville and a 30-year-old Mishima, I don't think it would be much of a contest. It wouldn't go to Mishima, no matter how much unarmed combat training he had done. Melville was not less manly he had bad knees but, but show me somebody who's been to see who doesn't have bad knees anyway that's a digression the point is that the answer to the question here is that neither one is dude bro neither melville nor mishima is dude bro so that is the answer to this first installment of uh dear king tentacle <laughs> which where steve reads his mail uh if i get another 
letter that I think is instructive as a question, I will certainly stop and answer it in, in the next thrilling installment of Dear King Tentacle. <laughs> I will see you then. <laughs> Thank you, BookTube.